We've dedicated significant areas of Naringa to revegetation. Our native plantings have provided wind shelter, they've provided shade, they ultimately reduce the heat rebounding in the middle of summer. Um, they have introduced a balance to the ecosystem which helps benefit the balance and health that we see in the vineyard. When we are talking about replanting, we're actually trying to put something back into our landscape. The hills are full of great plants. We've just selected a number here that we know grow well based on what we've found in our own native vegetation. People look at the cost of doing anything. They're always thinking about what am I going to get at the end of it? We can see long term the benefits, but it's costing now to get it started. And it's just like the vineyard. You start from scratch the vineyard, it's going to cost you X number of dollars and maybe three, four, five years, depending on how the season goes, before you get your first crop. And it's the same thing with the biodiversity enhancement that we're trying to do. You've got to do the groundwork. You've got to get your plants in. It's just like building a vineyard. What we're not doing is harvesting something to take back to the winery to put in to a bottle. What we're doing here is enhancing and harvesting biodiversity and its ability to assist us to grow better grapes. We're trying to blend our bush into our blocks. The way we are doing that is using plantings at the end posts. Everybody's got a leaky dripper line at the end post and that's just enough water for our passeria. And we plant them maybe one every seventh row because that's about the distance those beneficial insects travel out into the vineyard and go back to sort of thing. We took a decision from the very beginning that we needed to remove some trees to facilitate the layout of the vines. However, in return for that, we decided to devote about 15% of the land area to native vegetation. And therefore, where there were remnants of vegetation, we uh, improved them and enlarged them. And where there were none, we planted them uh, from a greenfield start. We chose a selection of native vegetation, lower, upper and higher storey. Uh, some of those things worked very well, however we found that some of the wattles really had a very short life cycle and so within 10 years they were breaking down and we were having to uh, clean them out. So selection was important, uh, we'd probably do it another way if we were doing this again. But however, we're happy with the native vegetation areas that we now have established. So one of the biggest challenges in the Adelaide Hills where you have more than 200 species of native plants is being able to distinguish the native plants from the weedy plants. Some of them are very, very similar. So providing landholders with that tiny bit of education around plant identification can go a really long way to good biodiversity conservation in the hills. Our job is to grow grapevines and grow really good fruit. It's never really been to, to manage what's around um, the outsides of the vineyard. Uh, we have a number of areas that require work for uh, native revegetation. So rather than jump in and do them all at once, which is a big task, we've decided to break it down into smaller areas. We've used an NRM board to just help us identify native species. Uh, we really weren't aware of you know, what was native and what wasn't native, apart from the, the obvious noxious weeds. So it was quite pleasing on some of our areas to see a lot of remnant native vegetation. By just removing the major noxious weeds, uh, we're sort of expecting the native vegetation to just grow and spread. Uh, hopefully we'll get some beneficial insects arrive and live on those areas, which can support the vineyard as well. At our Bahana Vineyard, we have a large waterway feeding into a big dam. There had been cattle on the property at one stage, so we've taken them off just to remove the effluent from cattle going into the dam. The area that feeds into the dam had been mowed in the past, which allowed a really fast water flow into the dam. So we've left vegetation in that waterway now. Uh, what that does is slows the water flow down, almost works like a filter uh, to help 
clean the water before it gets into the dam. That's just one small thing we've done there and that was pretty easy. It was pretty much doing nothing apart from removing cattle and not mowing. At Naringa we've been replanting cleared bare farming land with local endemic species. We've been really fortunate to have the support of Trees for Life and also have had access to a large bank of volunteers which has the benefit of involving and inspiring our local community to our landscape restoration project. The landscape, it doesn't sit within fences. It's a bit like terroir. It sits in its own soil type, its own rainfall. And for those growers to then use that plant association to extend across their revegetation sites, suddenly you're getting into hundreds of hectares of revegetation, which is really useful for the bird populations that are dropping. It's a really important strategy is to go cross boundaries and, and join up with your neighbours.